I got a request to make a video describing how to set up an automated system to produce high quality digital scans from a large number of slides using a slide projector and a digital camera. This presumes that you have a digital SLR or rangefinder with interchangeable lenses and that you already have a slide projector and the idea is to set up the automated system as cost effectively as possible with highest quality results. You could use whatever slide system you have if it's a uh, Aiki or a Bell & Howell or a Kodak uh, carousel. Whatever you have your slides in is what you'll choose and um, also, like with the carousel, there's a uh, stack loader, so if you have loose slides, you can scan those also. So the idea is that what you're going to have is a slide projector that you modify by reducing the amount of heat and light it's putting out by changing out the bulb with something lower wattage, uh, maybe an LED bulb, maybe a globe bulb um, that's maybe only 15 watts that's incandescent. If it's LED, you'd put in your own power supply that would be suitable to the voltage and um, current, modest current requirements of an LED. And then you need a, uh, a system to alternately advance a slide and then shoot the, um, the shutter on your camera. So um, with your light set up, you have a couple of options. You could take, say, with this Kodak carousel, uh, the existing 300 watt uh, bulb and put in one of the same voltage, either 82 volts or 120 volts, depending upon the model you have of your Kodak uh, carousel from the 60s, 70s, or 80s, and put in maybe an 85 watt bulb of the, exactly the same type and same size. Then you could put a neutral density filter and a diffuser over on the uh, end where the slide is or you could take out the mirror entirely and put a 15 watt uh, globe bulb maybe something with an E12 base and a large G16 type uh, frosted uh, globe that would make a very nice light and you just have to set your camera to incandescent maybe you know, 3000 K something like that uh, preferably what you'd want to have is uh, an LED that's color corrected and you'd have it here and then you'd still just put a diffuser but for the firing system what you're going to have to do is put in an adapter like this that you'd have uh, for, for the for the advance and then you'd, ha you'd tap that so you could easily plug it in and the same thing for your wired shutter release you'd also wire in a quick uh, connector so you can patch cord these in to your automated system to alternately sh uh, shoot between the camera and the um, and the slide projector I was going to use a rotary switch and I'll have this in the description this one has two poles and six positions so one of these you're going to set for your uh, shutter advance and one is going to be for the slide advance and then based on the timing as this goes around sequentially in a circle you're going to pick an appropriate position to hit the slide advance and then at some point the shutter and um, this goes completely around in, in circles so if you have a motor drive at any rpm that you uh, want um, you could have this go continuously. This particular switch had six positions and they have very solid detents so I took out the detent ball so it just turns easily and also it had a stop on it so it would only go six positions and then stop so I took bent the metal stop which is right there out of the way so it'll just keep going infinitely in circles which will act to have the other uh, contact also run in the same thing. So it, on each side, it's going to run in six positions for a half turn, and then it's gonna run the same six on the second half of the turn. So if you get a motor that's running at say 18 revolutions per minute, you're going to get 36 
shutter releases and 36 advances of the slide projector, which is probably a pretty good uh, uh, clip, what I'd recommend. Then for the input of your motor that's going to drive this uh, dizzy uh, in circles, this distributor, um, you can get whatever AC adapter you just happen to have. If you have one that's 6, 12, 24 volts, I happen to have a 24 volt AC adapter that I'm not using for anything. That's going to be the one that you're going to select for your motor, whatever you have an AC adapter for. And then you're going to connect the two with one of these connectors. This is a uh, shaft coupler. On this particular one, the um, the, uh, the detent uh, uh, six position uh, shaft driven uh, switch was a quarter inch shaft and um, so uh, the adapter I got has two different sizes because the motor happened to be have a six millimeter shaft and a quarter inch is 6.35 millimeter so the coupling I got has quarter inch on one side and it has 6.35 millimeters, uh, uh, 6 millimeters on one side, 6.35 on the other. And then you'll use these set screws and just tighten them down with a, with a wrench. And so with this setup, it's going to then, uh, you'd have these connected to, I would put this whole thing in a project box. It can be just a regular cardboard box. Then you can have the power coming in, have the motor and everything in a fixed armature and then have the, uh, the detents go to a couple, of, uh, a couple of contacts and then you can run a, a RCA patch cord between the, um, between the, the settings and, and the shutter release. So I'll put together a shopping list you have here. So you're going to need one of these motors and you're going to have to select the number of RPM and don't forget that it's going to be twice that because it's going to shoot twice with every revolution. So if you get the one that's 10 RPM, you're going to be shooting 20 photos per minute. 23 is going to be 36 uh, photos per minute. So that might be a bit ambitious because if you have the camera set to autofocus, it might take a, a, a little bit of time for the camera to focus before it shoots. If you pre-focus, you could probably go much faster. There's going to have to be a bit of a delay before you tell it to shoot the shutter. Well, probably more of a delay after telling it to the slide projector to advance because it's going to take time to seat the slide, open the gate, and that's when you're going to shoot the camera. So that's why you're going to have to select a setting that's a little bit in advance of where the, um, the, the detent was for, uh, for shooting the, the camera. Um, what else do you have here? Also, you're going to need a macro lens, preferably a short telephoto for your camera. I'm thinking maybe a 105 millimeter macro that can go one to one. That should fill the frame. If you want to really get in there into that frame and, and be able to adjust it, you might want to use a, a, an extension tube. If you don't have maybe the shortest extension tube of this uh, three extension tube set from newer, which is pretty reasonably priced and a nice thing to have anyway. So maybe the 12 millimeter extension tube and a macro lens would work pretty well. Or if you don't have a macro lens, use the 36 millimeter tube and, and a regular telephoto lens. Maybe a, um, an 85 to 105 or 135 zoom for a full frame 35 millimeter would be kind of nice. Another option you have for shooting the camera, a lot of these slide projectors will have a, uh, a position switch inside the machine, and I'll show that later, um, that will, um, it will, uh, it's a temporary switch that will, uh, is normally open or normally closed, and you could use that to fire the camera because it won't be um, actuated until the, uh, until the slide is seated. So as soon as the slide is ready, the camera would go off, in which case you wouldn't need this setup at all. You could use a solid state pulser like this one over here. This is a flashing module and you can set the uh, amount of time that it's on and the amount of time it goes off. So you can have it uh, actuate every half second and when it actuates it can be in the uh, on position for maybe an eighth of a second, whatever the slide projector needs to get that pulse to advance. 
and then so the only thing you're controlling is the advance on the slide projector and the slide projector itself is what's uh, telling the camera to fire. So there's your shopping list. You're going to need a, um, the gear motor. You're going to need this uh, two pole six position shorting type switch. Get the shorting type because if you need extra dwell time you can tie two pins together and create more time where either the slide projector is getting its advanced signal or the camera is getting its firing signal and it's going to make contact with the next contact before it breaks contact with the pre previous one. That's a shorting type. So you could tie three of these together and get a long dwell time where the camera, say, is being told to fire or the slide projector is being told to advance. So you can customize this uh, to your own setup. You're going to need a coupler and it depends upon if you get to this particular motor which has a six millimeter uh, shaft and you get this quarter inch shaft which is 6.35 millimeter then you're going to want the one that converts from a quarter inch to six millimeter. If you get ones that are quarter inch on both of these then you obviously you're going to get the quarter inch to quarter inch or the six millimeter to six millimeter. I'd get a whole batch of these like here was a set of 30 for 12 bucks but you can get these for about you know maybe a, a less than a buck a piece. The, uh, the coupler here is a buck 66. The position switch was two dollars and fifteen cents from uh, amplified parts. Uh, the worm gear I got off of eBay. Uh, the newer um, uh, extension ring set, that's the most expensive item. It was forty five dollars with free shipping and I think that was either from Amazon or maybe B&H photo, I forget. Um, if you're getting an LED bulb, um, there's a couple of different ones out there. Um, for the, uh, if you get the globe bulb, they're about only 70 cents a piece, or 80 cents, and then the base is maybe a buck or two, and you can get those from any light bulb supply company. Um, the diffusing uh, material, it can be a, any piece of, let's see if I've got one handy over here. I have a diffusing uh, ring. Let's see. See, so here's a glass. Uh, here's a glass diffusing disc. Let's see what else I have. If you go, uh, let's see here. I've got a lot of these uh, Roscoe uh, Cinegels. Let me see if I got a picture of it here. Hold on a second. setting. Okay, so here, here are some Cinegels. I don't know if you can see it or not, but these are diffusing ones. Um, here's num number 3206 diffuser. It's a pretty, it's a pretty uh, frosted one, but any kind of uh, sheet diffusing material, and you'll need about a two inch square or a two inch circle, and then you put it in here in the stage right before you get to the slide. So that's the last thing you'll need, and you should be uh, ready to go with this. You get your 35 millimeter camera, uh, digital camera, maybe an extension tube set, a couple of sundry parts, and we'll do the build later, but that's your shopping list.